grand rising or good morning. Let's have a little chat, shall we? Let's have a little occult chat. This is your host, The Occult View. You know, I think it's time that I start sharing more um, of my spiritual experiences because I believe that when one shares their spiritual experiences, it can help those who are like-minded. I don't mean being friends or being in a cult. I'm not looking to be friends. I'm not looking for any of that. You know, I do have, you know, people that I'm cool with. I have people that, you know, well, one person that I'm kind of like a big brother to and a mentor to, but it's strictly platonic, you know, because I'm not that type of person. You know, I don't take advantage of people nor situations. You know, I don't, I don't make a whole lot of money from my spiritual business. I'm not a... I don't have a lot of subscribers, as you can see. And that's because I'm the real deal. I'm not on here to sell you pipe dreams and tell you everything is going to be okay. Because at the end of the day, when you are doing any real spiritual work, sometimes it's going to feel like it's not going to be okay. Sometimes it's going to feel like everything around you is crumbling. And it doesn't always mean somebody's doing spiritual work on you. It just simply means that the universe may be trying to get your attention or your spirit or spirits or whatever you are aligned with are trying to get your attention for the greater purpose and for the greater good. You, you understand what I'm saying? 99.9% .9 of the time, that's the reason. And, you know, right now we're living in a very, very interesting time. And I've heard from different, you know, different spiritual people that this time that we're living in is like one of the worst times in history because of the energy that we're up under. I forgot or I forget the name that they call it, but we're up under a certain energy right now. And the last time we were up under this energy in this time in history because everything repeats, it was also a very tumultuous time. So during, you know, those of us who chose to be in this time, you know, we are the true spiritual warriors, those who are, let's just say, on that particular path. You understand what I'm saying? And I've heard people say that you know, it's dangerous to open up your third eye because some people may not be ready for it. A lot of people's third eyes are open and they don't even recognize it because they brush it off because we've been taught to, oh, that's nothing. I see weird shit all the motherfucking time. I see spirits all the time, but I don't say anything. I don't say anything because it's nothing to brag about. You feel what I'm saying? It's nothing to brag about. This is, this is real work. This is real shit. And <clears throat> at the end of the day, the goal is to let go of everything that you think you know. And that's what I want to talk about. I was talking to my spirit. My spirit was talking to me. I was talking to a very ancient, hidden part of myself. That's all I'm going to say. Because if I say the actual title for that, people won't understand. You get what I'm saying? No disrespect, but let's just say I was talking to my spirit, a very hidden part of me. And it gave me some really, really, really profound information for me. It said to me, it said, Seer, make sure you drink from the right chalice. And I was like, 
what, what, what does that mean? Drink from the right chalice. So then I started getting images of certain people, I'm not going to mention any names. And it took me back to that movie with Indiana Jones and the called The Last Crusader, when he and his father were looking for the Holy Grail, which is a chalice, which was the, the cup that Christ drank out of at the Last Supper. And for those people who remember that scene when they were in that under, underground uh, cave or whatever, and there was a guardian there, and the guardian, was, he was explaining to them, these are the many chalices on the wall. You have to choose wisely. Of course, I would be the guardian <laughs> if I was in the movie. You know, I, if, that, if that was real, I would be the guardian, the gatekeeper. And he told them, he said, choose wisely. So the first guy, he chose a chalice that was really pretty. It had so many, it was so beautiful. It had so many diamonds on it. It was, um, had rubies and emeralds. It was golden. It was a golden, beautiful chalice. He drank out of it and he began to perish. He became thinner. All, all, it was all quickly. It wasn't slowly. It was quickly. He drank out of the chalice and he turned to ash. He died. He chose materialism. He chose aesthetics. He chose carnality, and that led to his ultimate immediate death. Then Indiana Jones, he drank out of a chalice, and the chalice he drank out of, it was kind of beat up. It was old looking. It didn't really look that good. It was something that most people would not choose, you know? And when he drank out of it, the guardian of the chalices told him, you chose wisely. He said, you chose wisely. And that was actually, that was the, you know, in the movie, that was the Holy Grail. But the symbolic message of all of that is this. We as people, we have been drinking out of the wrong chalice. We have been drinking out of the chalice of only carnality. There's nothing wrong with having a good life. There's nothing wrong with being prosperous. But there are other elements of your existence that you need to, or you should tap into. I don't wanna say you need to, because I really don't care whether you do it or not. That's not why I'm here. And that's no disrespect. But I've seen so many people who call themselves, and mainly black men, who call themselves spiritual or spiritualist or occultist. And the thing is, is that everything that they do is based upon money. And using this work to obtain things of a carnal or materialistic nature. And that's all well, fine, and good. People should pay you for your services. People should pay you for, for your worth. But when you are in a position to lead people's minds and you're not leading their minds to where they need to be, that's a problem. Because even though you should not be leading anybody's mind, people are gonna follow you because People have a cult mentality. And what my spirit was saying to me was some of your so-called spiritual teachers, they have chosen the wrong chalice. And he wasn't talking about any black women. He was talking about some of these black men who are supposed to be spiritual or spiritualist in, that, in this community. That's what this spirit was, was saying to me. And spirit was saying, I know I said he, because it's a, it's a mass. It came through as a masculine energy, but more and more became more androgynous. And 
the energy, the, the room, the altar room, my altar room that I was in, it started becoming very warm and the temperature rose. It was not uncomfortable. It did not feel bad. It felt very humble and warm. And if you all really knew that spirit that I was talking to, which I'm not going to name because that's my own personal, that's personal. But if you knew you would be, you would, you would, you would really be surprised because that one has gotten a bad rap. And no, I'm not talking about no saint or no devil or no Lucifer. I ain't talking about none of that because a lot of that is man-made practical bullshit or it has become. This is actually more ancient than that. So the spirit said, and it kept reiterating, make sure you choose the right chalice. Don't fall down the same path or go down the same pathway as some of your so-called spiritual teachers and spiritual gurus. Don't go that, don't go down that same path. Because ultimately, what you should be striving for is wisdom, knowledge, understanding, self-control, self-love, self-realization, self-awakening. And when I say self-awakening, I mean realizing that you're already an awakened being. You're already an awakened being. You're already awakened. It's it the, the, the conquest or the, the the challenge is understanding and knowing that you're already awakened. That's the challenge. The spirit also told me, it says, Seer. Your problem is, is that for, for most of your life, you have always had expectations for people. And I said, bitch, not calling the spirit a bitch. I was like, what? The spirit said, you have always had expect expectations for people. And you have to stop having expectations for people because that is why you're always getting hurt. That is why you're always getting disappointed. See, I'm telling y'all some of my personal business now. That is why your heart is always getting broken because you have expectations for people who are living in a blind illusion. Let me say that again. You have expectations for people who are living in a blind illusion. And they don't even know it. And I said, damn. And when I, and, and you know, when spirit says, and how I interpret it, having expectations for people, it doesn't mean that you let people and you accept anything. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that you have to let things run its course. And when there's a toxic person that is in your life, or or let's just say, uh, let me take that word toxic out because that's become too cliche-ish. When you have people in your life who are not good for you, or if there are situations that arise that are not good for you, you have to take the expectations of those people in those situations out of the game and you let it run its course. Because having expectations for people will always get you hurt. Just like I had expectations for certain people, it ended up getting me hurt. Because the people that you have expectations for, even so-called high-level spiritual teachers, when you have those expectations for those people or anyone, it will always get you hurt. They will always disappoint you because they're not you. They're not going to understand you and your needs the way that you do. And this applies to parents, mother and father. It applies to your children. If you're parents and you have difficult children, because let's be honest, I'm not a parent, okay? 
And I would never try to tell parents how to raise their children because I don't have any. But what I will say is I do see both sides. I see how ch I, I'm a child. I'm a person. I'm someone's son. I do see how parents can be. And I also see the struggle that parents and the challenges that parents have trying to do the best that they can do to raise their children. And then even and then what makes it even harder is if their children do not come out the way that they want to or they don't turn out the way that they want to, despite your best efforts. Sometimes you can give your children all the love and support that they that 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 you that, that you can or, or that they need and they still will, t will turn out to be someone like a uh, like those like those uh, two uh, boys that murdered that girl in Alabama. The story finally came out what happened. That girl who was a black woman, you all I did the story yesterday on my last video. <clears throat> That's that young woman. She was with her boyfriend. And she rejected one of those guys. I think it was the light skinned one. And he shot her. And his boyfriend shot at them. Good for him. Good for him. But ultimately, they took that young woman's life simply because she rejected them and didn't want to give them the time of day. You see what I'm talking about? And this person went to college. He had all the opportunities to do, to, to do great. He probably would have went on to get a basketball scholarship, probably already had one. He probably would have, would have went on to be in the, in the NBA. But that's because people have chosen the wrong chalice. See, he chose the wrong chalice. And that's usually what happens when you choose the wrong chalice. See, death is not always about total eradication out of the physical world. Those two young men are now dead. They're dead. They're the walking dead. Same thing with Lisa Marie Presley. She was the walking dead. No disrespect. But she drank out of the wrong chalice. Like a lot of those people in Hollywood, they drink out of the wrong chalice. It's not literal what you saw in that movie, The Last Crusader. It's all symbolic. When you drink out of the wrong chalice, when you drink out of the chalice of pure carnality and pure materialism, you will perish and you will not have everlasting life. Or you will live in a life full of hell. never having any deeper understandings. That's what hell really is to a certain degree. Not having deeper understandings or deeper wisdom or deeper knowledge of how things operate. Because when you're under the, when you're under the control of carnality and materialism, that is a deity in and of itself. That is a demon in and of itself. That is a man-made, self-created demon. So that's a prime example right there of drinking out of the wrong chalice. But getting back to expectations and no longer having expectations, I've decided for me, I no longer have expectations for people. I no longer have any... Um, preconceived notions or ideas about people, I have simply let that go. I have simply let that go. The only person that I am focused on is myself and the people, the one or two people that really respect me and who lift me higher. That's it. That's all. You know? But I have no expectations for people anymore. And you don't know how liberating that's the true. That's a true revolutionary act. When you liberate yourself from having expectations of people. That's a true revolutionary act. Having no more expectations 
And like I said, this applies to mothers, children, especially boyfriend, girlfriends, husband and wives. Because no matter how much we love someone, we cannot make people be what we want them to be. My friend that lives with me, that applies to him too. I no longer have any expectations of him. And I know people may think, that sounds crazy, Seer. Well, it sounds crazy if you don't really understand what I'm talking about. I'm not referring to letting people walk over you and letting people use you. And No, nothing like that. It just simply means you know where you stand spiritually. It simply means you are self-aware of who you are. It simply means you will not allow anyone else to manipulate you or manipulate your emotions anymore. It simply means you have control over you, the I, the all, which is you. You have control over that which you can't see. That's what that means. No expectations. You're no longer controlled by other people's emotions and other people's actions for the most part. You, you, you get what I'm saying? And now I'm getting it. Now I get why I was hurt by the so-called spiritual black conscious community a few years ago or by one person of that community because I looked at that person in a certain way that I shouldn't have been looking at that person like that anyway. I shouldn't have been looking at him like he was like that anyway. So that wasn't his fault. That was my fault. I don't fault him. I fault myself because the person that I should have been looking to in that way should have been me. The person who I should have been looking to for, you know, a uh, refuge is me. And my higher, my higher, so-called higher self, if that's what people want to call it. I call it the high spirit within you, the high spiritual. Um, I guess you can call it the high spiritual counsel within you. I should have never been looking to this person for any type of, you know, comfort or reassurance. I should have never been looking for that person for, for that in that person or anyone. Because again, people will disappoint you because a lot of people are not even spiritual like they say they are. It's about money. It's about self-gratification. And once your eyes are opened to the realization, there's no room to be mad anymore. Yeah, I was pissed off then. I was very hurt. And sometimes that hurt still, it still lingers. But now that I have an understanding that none of that shit was even real, including that person, none of that shit was even real. So if it wasn't real and I don't have any expectations of it, then guess what? It can't hurt you anymore. And to be honest with you, I benefited more than not. So there's no reason to be mad. No expectations. And make sure you drink from the right chalice. And let me leave you with this too. Remember, what we should be striving for is wisdom, knowledge, self-love. And I'm not talking about conceited, you know, um, you know, what do people call it? Narcissistic type of behavior. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about doing your work in silence because a true revolution, the, the true revolution is not going to be televised. The true revolution is a spiritual revolution. The true revolution takes place in a place that cannot be seen by the, by the physical eye. That's where the true revolution takes place. So just allow yourself to feel whatever it is that you feel without any expectations. Feel it. 
observe it, understand it. No expectations. And this will help you with anxiety. This will help you with panic attacks. This will help you with overthinking and it will help you in your spiritual work as well. And I don't know why, but I feel like this energy is really talking more so to black women because the spirits really want black women in particular to be more empowered spiritually, not with the practicality stuff that you see online. Spirits really, I don't know why, but that's what's coming through. Spirits really want black women to be more empowered spiritually. It doesn't matter what you follow, but they want you to be more empowered spiritually and they want you to come up from under these men in these fucking groups and cults and all this other bullshit. The conscious community is a cult. It's a cult, no matter what they say. The spiritual black conscious community is a fucking cult. And yes, I said it. Sia Grant said it. It's a cult. And I feel like spirit wants black women to come up out of that and come into your own. You don't need no man to lead you spiritually. Men cannot lead women spiritually. Because woman, black woman is first. I don't care what the Bible says. That's on bullshit and cap. And I said it. Don't care if you don't like it. That's bullshit. Woman was first. And I feel like spirit wants me to say that. Because I feel like I'm talking to the spirit of black women. Don't fight. And, and listen, I know I'm a man too, but I'm not asking you to follow me. I'm asking you to follow your own spirit. And tap back into your own power. And don't let it be from the chalice of death and carnality. Make sure it's from the chalice of eternal life. Eternal joy. Eternal peace. Of wisdom. And knowledge. And self-love and self-care. And not in the European white sense. I'm talking about in the spiritual sense. Because that is everlasting because the spirit is the word and the word is the spirit and the spirit is eternal. And so is the word. Heaven and earth are carnalities. They will pass. Heaven and earth will perish, but the spirit lives forever, forever. So I don't know why, but I just feel like that this message is mainly for black women because black women have been suppressed. Black feminine energy has been suppressed for so long. And you've been bamboozled to think that you have to be up under the spiritual tutelage of a man. Men cannot teach women shit when it comes to spirituality. I have to go to women to learn. I have to go to female black teachers to learn real stuff. And that's just what it is. Anyway, that's all I really have to say. That's my spiritual message for today. Drink from the right chalice. Have no expectations. Thank you.